Hello, Lightroom Summit friends. I hope you had a fantastic first day. Thank you so much for being a part of everything. And I know it's cool when I see instructors trading messages back and forth saying like, hey, I even learned some, I learned a tip in that class and this class. So it, it's fun to see. And I know you guys are, uh, are learning a ton as well. A couple things. Number one, I'm gonna do a quick recap here with tips. So I'm gonna do this every day. So swing by every day and watch this video, my, my video update, and uh, I'll throw in a couple of tips. So it could be just a recap and uh, maybe I'll call out a class that you wish that you saw, but I'm also gonna include a little tip that you might not have seen or written down or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, as we get started here, one thing, so we're new classes released every hour on the hour. So there's eight brand new classes today. Uh, if you happen to be on the page for a while and you haven't refreshed, just refresh and the new classes will appear um, as they get added to the page there, okay? Uh, and finally, big thank you to everybody for making this happen, all especially the VIP pass holders for all of your support. And I know that you're enjoying number one, lifetime access, so you get to come back and watch this stuff whenever you want, but also the class notes and the bonuses and everything that goes along with it. So big thank you for that. Let's dive in and uh, I'll do my quick recap along with some tips here. First, so one of the first classes was from Sean Bagshaw and he did a class on catalog. Number one, Sean is just, Sean is an amazing photographer, super nice guy. Uh, make sure you, you stop by his website and, and check Sean out. But he did, uh, he did a session on catalogs, which is such a key to understanding Lightroom to feel comfortable with the catalog. So I'm, I'm really glad he did that course and I'm glad we put it early on in the day because um, I think it's a great way to to give people some vital information that they need. One of the things that Sean showed, which I hear questions about all the time, is sometimes people will import photos into Lightroom and then, I hate to say this, but forget where they put them. The really cool thing is, is if you go to the left-hand side, when you're in the library module, you go into the left-hand side and you go under the catalog, panel, not the folders and collections, because that's where we put our photos and sometimes we forget where we put them. But if you go to the catalog panel, one of those things is going to be previous import. So you can actually see the previous photos that you just brought into Lightroom right there. The last import, you'll see them right there. Another good one is missing photos. If you ever have photos that are on different drives that you forgot, uh, you can see uh, which photos are no longer connected to Lightroom right inside of there. So that catalog panel can be a big help, but make sure you check out Sean's class if you missed it. Um, another one, so Mark Denny did a class on range masks, which uh, is just, to me, one of the most powerful areas inside of Lightroom. So when you go over here to the develop module, and let's say, let's say I were to go and add a little bit of a graduated filter to something and maybe try to darken it. And, um, you know, in fact, I think I already did darken part of this. So let me delete it. There we go. So I try to darken, I add a darkening filter to this. Problem is, is it darkens everything. So what Mark shows you is how you can use range masking to just affect certain parts. For example, you know, don't affect the dark areas, just affect the brighter areas and then smooth out some of those masks as well with that smooth the slider. But here's, here's one little tip that a lot of people miss and it's a great way to learn what range masks do is click that little checkbox down there that says show luminance mask and you'll see in pink what's being affected and that way you can just go in there and you can just add or remove from it and you can actually visually see what it's working on. It's a really great way to learn what range masks do. Uh, ben Wilmer did a class on the Lightroom mindset, which uh, again, and anything by Ben Wilmer, I think you owe it to yourself to, to jump in there and watch because Ben has been doing this in such a detailed level for, for so long. Um, when he gets you into the idea of the frame of mind that you need when you're using Lightroom, I think it's really helpful. Colin Smith did a class on dodging and burning, uh, which is also another one of my favorite topics. And when you grab your brush over here and you go up here and we can start to either dodge or burn. So say I maybe want to do a little bit of darkening up there and I start darkening this. Um, one of the things that you can do is if you happen to spill over to a, the wrong area, you can hold down your option key on Mac or your alt key on PC and you can erase from areas. Sure, there's an erase section at the bottom there, but you don't even need to do that. All you have to do is hold down your option or your alt key. Uh, Dave Cross did a class, Lightroom, Photoshop, or both. I encourage you to watch that one because 
as I tell anybody that asks me that question, the answer is both. And Dave does a really good job of helping you figure uh, figure out you know which which is best for for which purpose. Uh, Chris Orwig, amazing photographer and amazing Lightroom instructor, he did a uh, he did a, a really good class on portrait editing inside of Lightroom. So you saw a lot of landscape stuff. Chris does a lot of portrait work. And while I don't have a portrait up here the technique that I'm going to show you. So let's say that you're, you're painting something. So he was painting on, I believe it was somebody's teeth. You can press the letter O to see the overlay of what you painted, which helps can help you, you know, hone in on, especially just to see what you've worked on. A lot of people don't know that you can go under the tools menu, go down to adjustment mask overlay, and you can change it from red to green to white, black, whatever. So sometimes you may be painting on something red, and the red overlay doesn't help, but you can change the color of it to something else if you wanted to. And then Jesus Ramirez, another wonderful, wonderful instructor that's out there. Uh, he did a class on color grading, which is a huge topic. And one of the little tips that he, uh, he talked about is let's say you're tinting your shadows or highlights or whatever it happens to be with color grading. One of the cool little things is you can hold down, once you find a color, you can hold down the shift key and this lets you control the intensity of that color. If you don't hold down shift, you can very, very easily move it, right? It doesn't necessarily stick where you are and you can start to move that color a little bit as you drag back and forth. So holding down shift keeps you in a straight line and it's a nice way to stick to that specific color, but at the same time to, uh, to go in there and you know, just finesse the amount or the intensity of that color a little bit. So hope you guys enjoyed the tips. Come back tomorrow. I'll have some more for you as well. And uh, thanks for being a part of this. We'll talk to you soon.